Okay, this is Roger Mudvassa University, and today we're going to get back into some vaginas. And um, before we do that, I want you to see this tiny little split right there. Do you see that? Does everybody see that? Pretty obvious. Let's see what that <laughs> what that makes it. Well, let's look down. I told you we're going to get into some vaginas, and that's where we're going right now. Now, as you can see, that tiny little split goes all the way down into the cervix. And you say, whoa, that's a cervix? I said, well, it sure looks like a cervix to me, and I'm pretty good with vaginas, so I would say that is a cervix. Now, what else do we have here? We have the vagina. What else do we have here? Now, it's a, the urinary area. And this split is the seam that welds the abdominal cavity together. Now, why is it split? Why is that tiny little split there? How could that possibly happen? Well, the reason that happens is, and I'm going to show you the bi biology very shortly, and it will be extremely obvious. The reason this happens is that when these creatures were drowned in the Great Flood in these salt water conditions, salt preserves flesh. It preserves it. It destroys bones. Bones are locked in a membrane in your body. They are not in the salt condition like your flesh is. The flesh says, hey, I'm happy. As long as it's salt water, I'm okay. The bones say, whoa, and they transition into what they call source rock. We're going to go over that later. Now, that little split is the abdominal seam. And as the, the blastula forms, and I will show you again, it seams together right there. This is what's called a fascia seam. This is not a standard growing chunk of meat like everything else in the body. Fascia separates tissues. That's its job. It separates them. Well, in this area, it fuses, but it is a weak connection. And it splits when the body dries out. And a natural intention of a thing when it dries, it sort of, you know, it sort of splits here and there and cracks where the weak spots are. And that is the weak spot. Now I'm going to show you the bi biology. So, you geologists need to pay attention to this. Because you say, oh, I can only watch a minute of this. I hear this all the time. I couldn't watch it more than a minute. That's why you are lost. And you will never get found until you can, can stop this arrogant attitude of we can say anything we want and we don't care about the reality. And that's what's happened. Years and years of this now. Yale, as, as far as I'm concerned, has no interest in the truth whatsoever. Professor Derek Briggs will not confront this. I tried for years with him. So I want some answers. It's time to, t to address this for the reality that it is. Thank you. Okay, this is how the blastula forms, and as it's a re regular round ball, and then it collapses inside of itself. So it's a round ball, bloop, and then that seals to the inside. This is what pinches. You see it? And once it pinches, it's not the seal like everywhere else in here. This is like a, a fusion seal, and that is the part that cracks open. And I want to make a statement. The reason I mentioned Derek Briggs is because I've approached him years ago and over and over, and, and um, I get no response from him whatsoever other than go find somebody that understands rocks. Now, I sh showed DNA, I showed CAT scans, I showed you know, all these things online. He said, oh, I looked at it, there's nothing there, it's just rocks. So I think I have more than rocks here. And that's the only reason I mention his name. But they, they, they're all like that. Everywhere I've sent it, you know, i got to be honest with you. He's, he, he, he originally addressed this. And as soon as I came up with evidence, he was gone. As far as I'm concerned, that was it. the evidence was too much. That's my opinion. If he doesn't see this, I can't say, I, all I can say is, where is the competence level? The problem with these PhDs is that they, everybody, oh, I just don't know one thing. As a matter of fact, I've got to tell you a funny story. I called, it was like, I think it was Wesleyan. Because I'm right in the area. I'm right between Wesleyan and, and Yale. I'm right, right down the street from all of them. They won't look at it. And um, I got a hold of some historian. And, oh, I only know anything from 1837 to 1853. Nothing else do I know. That was it. And it's got to be about pottery or something. <laughs> 
So anyway, you guys got to get a little more education. You got to get a little more broad spectrum of knowledge. Anatomy, biology, physiology, light, heat, transfer of electrons. All right, and then maybe you could pass the course at Mud Foster University. All right, we have, we'll let you in. It's free. Okay, we got another vagina for you here. Here's a little split for the abdominal cavity. And let's see what it looks like. Ooh, there's a guy standing there. Pretty good sized vagina. Now, <laughs> that's all I can say is what it is. Now, we're going to see something. And the reason I'm showing you this, and the reason that I, I'm making such a big deal out of this is because of the Great Flood. This is what is the result from the Great Flood. And the, which is a biblical event. Now, you could laugh all you want in academia, because you will. Oh, that's all nonsense. Well, let me tell you something. You better start paying attention, my friends, because this is not nonsense. The things that you are selling is nonsense. There's another one with that same split. They are all over the earth. Every woman had one. This is somewhere in the Baltics, I'm not sure where. The, the first one, the pink one, is some, I, I believe that's also in the Baltics, Romania, or somewhere out in that area. I'm not even positive where it is. But it was a Tracian, um, you know, holy place. And, um, and they were all over. And this, you cannot dispute this. It's not, it's not even disputable. There's nothing you can say against it other than to turn your, your eyes away for fear of being embarrassed. That you, you didn't, and you guys never address these things. Well, I don't let things just settle. I want to address them, and we're going to address it right now. Let me show you something that's going to knock your socks off, because it proves every single thing that they had said in the past. And then if you can continue on to spew out the things that you're talking about, history, geology, all that, well, good for you, because it's all nonsense. All right, go on your own Google Earth, you'll see. This whole area ran out, and there is very little question about that. If you can dispute that, I'd like to see you dispute that. That is runoff from the Sahara Ocean when it drained. And that happened because of that gigantic fish. And if you can't see that, I don't know what to say other than lens crafters. It's a gigantic fish laying there in the desert. That's its scales. That's its tail. This dragon right here was trying to kill that fish and spit all of this exactly the same thing that is in in the most noxious toxic venoms of snakes at that fish and it combusted right here and landed all over his back and his fin and into his vital flesh here and ate away at it now, you have Google Earth. You can go up here and look at this. I have many, many, many videos on this, and it will not be addressed by anyone in geology. Total, total, total ignoring facts. Now, that is a dragon. I'm going to show you the scales. You see this runoff right here? You talk to any, any coroner, and they'll tell you, oh, yeah, yeah that happens all the time. It is the, the effluent that runs away from dead decaying bodies in this case a dead decaying dragon and here is his body and here is his neck and up here is his head and he spit all that stuff out of his throat right over here all right let's come back out all right here he is here's his head Let's go down his throat. We saw where it spit it out. I can show you where it actually mixes those two chemicals together. And that is it right there. Red and green, they squirt together out here. And he was shooting that at that fish. And the, all of those are like little squirters. And that came right out of his throat, whoosh, all over here. I've done a lot of work on this, and I understand this extremely well. These little ridges here are the inside of his throat. It's not some kind of valleys and hills. These are dragon scales. And they are extremely thick and dense. And this dragon was protected unbelievably 
I mean, look at the size of the dragon. This thing is almost a thousand miles long. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're crazy. Well, good for you. You can think whatever you want. That's the flashy stuff you see on dragons in all the parades. And that little fluty stuff that runs down the side, and here's all his dragon back going on there. Now, what is going on through his throat here? Well, we're seeing all of his dragon scales. And you can see them there in these little pads. That allows for the flexibility of the, of the neck. You come down here and look careful. You fully understand this. But you have to look and think. You can't just say, well, that's crazy. Well, this is crazy. I didn't say it wasn't crazy. But it's true. Now, what, is, what else happened? It says in the biblical text that there was a great and mighty sword that cut the throat of the dragon. And I don't know what else could cut that throat but a great and mighty sword. And it is cut. And it's slashed right across here. And that's where he bled out in the desert. And that black and red blood is the vein and the ar arterial blood. That is absolutely no question that that is factual runoff from decomposition. Now, how big is this thing? It runs all the way down here. This is, this is, this is his back and these are his legs. And all the way down here is his tail. And the same runoff is down here. And the same scales are down here. And it actually runs all the way out. There's a, like a fluty, fluffy thing on the end of the tails, apparently, because it's there. And, uh, and it's there. That's, that's the size of it. It was attacking this giant fish in the middle of the Sahara Desert. And then when that collapsed over here, it allowed all that stuff to run into the ocean. And guess what happens to be right here? I believe this is Atlantis. And again, laugh all you want. That's exactly what Plato said. And it, it, this ran so much mud into the ocean, his statement was they would never speak about mud again. And these are the dock slips right in here where the boats are. These are all channels. They are not just accidental little places in the, in the uh, desert. These are all boat slips. And here they run right down here. And there are actually places where you can see I think there are actually boats in there, or there's something in there. Let's put it that way. You can see these little dark spots. There's a lot of them in here. But those didn't, th these are channels come in here. You talk any mar mariner, they will understand this. And the whole thing is surrounded with this. And this is on, well, I don't know what they call this, the lee side. I guess they would call this the lee side of the cascading waters. I mean, look at it ripped through here. And they say cl this collapsed, and it did. Atlantis collapsed. And they said there was a strait. And when the strait collapsed, or, or gave way, that's what happened. That looks like a damn straight something to me. Now, time for reality, my friends. Time for reality, because not only does this show that it's ridiculous what they are teaching our kids, it is also taking them away from our true history, which could be linked to our eternal future. And I think it is, because it's all been written about, and it all says there will be a day of judgment, and the people that are the teachers are in trouble. It says, well, I'll show you what it says. All right, I'm just going to read this. You make of it what you will. I am already made of it what I will. This says 2 Peter 2, 1 through 17. This is the old King James Version. Let's go with that. There, will be false, there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresy, even denying the Lord that bought them with his life, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. No truth. And through covetousness, clever guile, shall they with feigned, faked words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Other places it says their destruction does not sleep. For if God's, well, let's go on for that. It's, it's, they're, they're going to hell if they don't straighten this thing out. I'm just, that's all it says. Not my words. See this? They don't understand this. Coal is underneath 
the great flood. So whatever was here, the plants and so forth, that was here turned into coal as a result of being compressed at, at the great flood. And the great flood left the kaolinite layer, which is kaolin clay, which is skin, and it eroded like a gigantic bathtub ring around the earth. Now in that kaolin clay is also iridium. They say it's an impact layer, smectites. It is not. It has nothing to do with impact. This iridium is in your skin and all of the other... This is clay. This is clay. Why did that clay come from outer space? Why did that happen? This is clay. Kaolin is the finest of clay and it is skin clay. The same... Th and I'll show you pictures of that too if you want to see it. Well, I'm going to show you, if you even if you don't want to see it. And there's iridium in here. They say, oh, iridium can only come from space. No, absolutely not. No way in the world is that true. Iridium is in your body, and it's primarily in your skin, I think. I'm not positive of that because they've never done any real studies on it, but I think it's a, an element that has the, the qualities of skin, the nature of skin to me. And, you know, something tough that's going to keep you, you know, your, your body protected from the elements. And that's what it is. Sandstone is sand, and the clays of your skin protect you from the elements. The sand, silicon, is embedded in these clays. The silicon is the protective layer. The clay is a flexible layer. They call them plastic clays. And they are embedded with another thing. It's called interstitium balls. These little round balls they find all over the earth were part of the skin. Then, after the skin eroded off from the big bathtub layer from the Great Flood, you also find the iridium is in there. That's all. Coal is nothing more than fleshy material after your skin. Then you get into the coal, which is your flesh. Then you get into the mudstone, which is the heavier flesh. And then above that, there'll be a lot of um, limestone and so forth because that's the... The con connective tissues that don't go bad, those things last forever. Limes, uh, connective tissues, not bones though. Bones transition into coal as well too. They transition into what they call source rock. I'll show you a bone right now. Hold on a second. All right, I told you I'd show you the kale and clay. That's it right there. That's in skin tissue. And that's what the big bathtub ring around the world is, kale and I. You see that? That's kale and that's the finest of slip clays. They make fine china and bone china out of. There it is right there. This is the finest of fine clays you see from skins. Same colors as skin. You see that? That's what happens to bones. Oh, wait a minute here. I'm going to come into the light. Hold on a second. Alright, you see that? Let me see if I can show this. Sometimes I can't tell if it's good. Alright, there we go. That's better. All right, you see that? That's the bone. That's all that's left of the bone. I don't even know if you can see it. It's so small. It's right there. That's what's left of the bone after it transitions. You know, this is the black stuff, and that's what's called source rock. That's a bone. You see, it is a little blood vessels, and that's the the um, ligament attachment. And there's a ball that fits in there. It has little tiny little tendon balls that stick out of the main ball and that anchors it into your your bone and then there's another bone that has the same thing but when it goes this way a tiny little neck between it and then you can rock around like this and I will show you one of those from a giant as well these the, the, the tendon balls whew, they're tough some some chemistry will eat into them but not all lot all right hold on a second let's go back to the other stuff pattern on it uh, this Right here, and these little fluty things. You see? Them? Guess what that is? It's a goose's head. All right, this is in Triassic rock. This is right next to Dinosaur State Park. That's the neck. Let me show you this a little better. Hold on. All right, that's that goose's head. Now, you got to put a little water on these things to see things real well. If you look, you can see, right? See that little circular piece right in the center? That's his neck. And he died laying this way on the side, and his neck sort of squished over like this and came down this way. Now, that is his neck right in the center. See that right there? There it is. Now, I had another guy send me um, 
another head, picture head today, like a snake head, very, very interesting. But this was found in Triassic Rock area, same area where Dinosaur State Park is. See the, see the feathers on the head? A little hard to see them, but the, the pattern's in there, very good if you catch it in the right light which I'm not doing too good at. But anyway, it's there. Now, that, that's a, a goose. Now, and this was again found right next to Dinosaur State Park. And also this right here, which is a human footprint. And I'm going to show you something that's going to blow you away if you can be blown away, because you should be blown away. This right here is Triassic Rock. You see that black cap? That's a black cap. And underneath this black cap, is oof, and that's underneath of it. That is a human foot. You see that? Now, not only is that a human footprint, it is in a red bed. All right, if that is gray shale. So we have the black cap. We have gray shale. See it, gray. Push down through a red bed. Now just hold your horses my friend and think about this. The Triassic signature is black cap, gray shale, gray clay, red bed. Exactly what we have here and that human footprint which is human. I've looked at this and I've done every little thing about it. Molded, I put my own foot in it. It's human. No question whatsoever. And my, my, my foot fits right in there. That is, the, the heel is over here at the step. You can see right down all the little bits and pieces in there. Now, what else is going on? That is pushed down. You see that? That's the red bed here. Now we got the gray clay underneath the red bed. They say this took 65 million years. That's the Triassic signature. I got all three with a human footprint happened on a weekend. Who's, 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 who, how can you say anything else? How can you say anything else? Who will dispute that? Who can talk about this? Who can say anything? Nobody. Because this is what it is. And geology needs to re-examine the statements they are making in light of the evidence that mud fossils is providing. So let's talk about the reality of the situation and then we hopefully can get this straightened out in the education system. Because now, right now they're just wasting their time, they're wasting their money, they're being told things that aren't true and nobody seems to care. So here's what I'm saying. There was a great salt water flood approximately 4,300 years ago. It is the KT boundary. That was the flood. That was 65 million years ago. They come up with all these numbers of insanity. There was no impact either. I can show you for a fact that shock quartz is lung tissue. And I followed the core drillings in the Yucatan and they come up with all the shock quartz and they come up with all mud fossil stuff. And it is a huge arterial network down there, something along that lines. It, it's all shock quartz and, and uh, well, there's a lot of shock quartz, and that comes from um, your, your uh, lungs. I show this very clearly. It's from lung tissue. I have one right here. Uh, here it is, right here. They would call this, they would call this shock quartz. It's a little one, but it's a lung. It's a lung. They would call that shock quartz. I said, oh, that's shock quartz. No, it is not shock quartz. It has nothing to do with shock quartz. You see all those little vessels in between, all the little pockets in between there? That is where blood runs through the alveoli of lungs. And the alveoli of lungs are coated with transition metals. And the transition metals do what's called carboxylation, and they remove carboxylic acids from your body as your blood passes by these transition metals. It's not shock quartz. All right, iridium and kaolin are in the skin. That is the worldwide bathtub ring, is the KT layer. Now, what I want to know is what is above that and what is below that, because that determines our history. 
Now, you saw the dragon. You saw the fish. Are they above or below that layer? That's what I want to know. And what about, you? well, shock course is lung tissue. Tendon, tendon organs. Now, a tendon is an organ. It's not just one little piece of tendon. A tendon implants, and they call it the enthesis. They're balls, and they have little straps on them, and they lock into bones and muscles and, and all that business. And then they come out as a, a, a strappy little structure that attaches to muscles or, or, or a, a, to to pull on things. And then you also have ligaments that go from bone to bone and they keep your bones together. You took those ligaments out, you fall fall apart. Now, so that those are the, and they, they come out limestones, calcium, CaCO3s, with, they're, they're porphyritic limestone, porphyritic basalt. They're CaCO3 primarily with inclusions in them, which is the mineralized bits and pieces that structurally support your tendons and your, your body tissues. So that's where your limestone and these gigantic balls all over the earth, because these creatures were enormous. You just saw the vaginas in these things. The, the creatures were huge. So don't tell me, oh, they couldn't mate with human women. Oh, they, I got so many nonsense things that people say. And they immediately shut down and say, I couldn't watch another minute. Well, that is the weakest of all minds. Now, I showed you bones transition to source rock. You go to the petroleum industry, they'll tell you, there's no question about it. So, all the things I'm showing you, and I have all this stuff has been DNA certified, that's been DNA tested, and you show any anatomist this that's done any autopsies, let's show you, that is the pattern that's on a left human lung. And that is the depression of the heart on a left human lung. This guy was laying this way when he died, that's why it's flat like this. Now, this is the flap that's on the end, it's a very bloody flappy tissue and right there is where the where it the air went in however you know they cover up because they, they they're very very good the way the body works with its tissues but if you put a little water well you can see it if you look carefully see that black ring around there I hope you can see that anyway um, time to take this seriously mud fossil university it's free and it's true finish this up by saying that these are all my opinions you know I'm going coming down a little harsh but I've been six years trying to get this across and it is reality I have the evidence I have the proof I have the DNA I have the cat scans I have the specimens I have the anatomist assessment I have all of that they have nothing all they can do is turn their backs on this and I don't think that is in the students best interest and I think it is gross fiduciary failure which is a legal obligation because they have to act in the best interests of the students, and, and they're not. They're selling them something that is defective. So I would say come up to Mud Fossil University, see what you see here, and then confront your, your professors. You're paying for your education. You should get the truth. Even asteroid Ultima Thule, it's explained its biology. In space, it's biology. So don't tell me this is nonsense. You could come up here and look at that. You see that? That is a tendon emphasis right there. And that goes into the ground with another ball on the other side. There would be a bone here, and there's a bone under there somewhere. And that is what is your ligament. And Ultima Thule is the exact same thing in space. You see these? That's your tendon emphasis points. That's a, the balls. Then you get out to tendon. There it is right there. All right, you're going to have to come up here and see this. And, and, I'm going to tell you things that you are going to blow your mind out of your head because they're true and nobody will pay attention. That is a lung came through space. The entire universe is filled with body parts. Now, this is too much for your mind, I know. And you are going to go, oh, the guy's insane, he's insane. Well, you better stop, sit in the corner for a little while, clear your mind and think. Because there's a lot more to this than this.